In today's video, we're going to open up a very special little webcam and make it do tricks. Stay tuned. Hey guys and gals, welcome to the WL Tech Blog channel. Today we're going to have some fun with the cheap little webcam I picked up on Amazon. There's a lot of ground to cover here, so let's get started. First off, I want to shout out Hacker Homestead for introducing me to these. His channel is growing and he's got a Discord community set up for a project related to this. If you like this video, make sure to check out his channel as well. We've pretty much all got webcams of one sort or another these days. Despite the big name manufacturer's best attempts, they're pretty boring. Generally, you get a camera sensor, an IC to pull the image, and an IC to handle the USB connection. Those are all good, useful functions, but they're clearly built to meet a price point and not able to do much more. Here's an example of one that looks suspiciously similar to the one we're going to play with. As you can see, there's very little here. But sometimes weird stuff happens in the world. Sometimes there's a global shortage of webcams, and it makes sense to decrease production of product A if you can rework its components to make product B. I can't say for sure, but I think that's what we have in this case. So let me introduce you to our camera. These are fairly generic items, but the one I have is branded WAMS View. The specs on the box don't seem very interesting. 1080p, 30 frames per second, autofocus, microphone, plug and play, USB, basic stuff you expect out of a $15 webcam. But it gets more interesting once you open it up. Two screws on the back will get the faceplate loose. The microphone is attached with this plug. We'll go ahead and pop that out. Two more screws and we've freed the circuit board from the housing. On the front, we have this camera sensor, some support components, an LED, and some pads. Note how the camera is connected by a ribbon cable rather than using traces in the board. Let's turn it over and see the back. On the back, we've got a 24-pin camera connector, 8-pin SPI flash module, and the star of the show, an Ingenic T31 microcontroller. Or microcontroller? Like an Arduino? Well, yes and no. Little hobbyist boards like Arduino tend to be 8-bit microcontrollers with very low speeds, very little memory, and that run application-specific software rather than an operating system. But microcontrollers don't have to be that way, and you can easily find them with real CPU architectures like ARM, MIPS, and even x86, with far more substantial resources and performance on board. In this case, we have a rather interesting chip from Ingenic. Ingenic has been around for a while, and in fact the T31 isn't a new model by any means, but it is still a current offering. This particular chip is the T31N, and there's a lot going on in this little guy. In addition to the MIPS core, this chip also contains the memory, a dedicated image signal processor, a dedicated video processor, audio codec, USB, controllers for the cameras, displays, the typical embedded connectivity stuff like UART, I2C, and other GPIO functions, and this little interesting bit, a RISC-V core. That's the general specs. There are a few versions of the T31, and what we have here is the T31N. So more specifically, we have a clock speed up to 1.5 GHz, 512 megabits of DDR2 memory, which of course is 64 megabytes. It also includes 128-bit SIMD features, deep neural network functions, and audio echo cancellation. That's a lot of stuff on this tiny chip, and suffice to say that's a lot more than you expect for a $15 no-name brand webcam. So today I'm going to get us hooked up to this camera and poke around with the operating system. To do that, you'll need a few things. Basic soldering equipment and abilities, a multimeter, a USB serial to TTL converter, and some jumper leads. I'll put some links in the video description to what I'm using in case you need some of those things. Looking at the front of the board, you see these four pads near the edge. The print is small, but they are labeled. You've got ground, TX, RX, and 3 volt 3. These are the TTL lines and how we're going to access this little guy. Most of the time when you're taking things apart, they won't actually label them and you'll need to figure out which is which with a multimeter. 
I'm using an FTDI TTL converter and part of a pin header left over from something else. We don't need to connect the power line, just the ground, transmit, and receive lines, which is good because the spacing on these pads is just slightly off from normal pin header spacing, but close enough that we can get these three connected. I'm using a breadboard to connect the ground lines together and connect the receive on one end to transmit on the other and vice versa, and we should be ready to go. If you're new to soldering or just suck at it like me, you probably want to check your work with a multimeter. Just make sure none of your lines are a short to another and you should be good. Now one thing I do is use a Raspberry Pi device to plug these projects into, rather than exposing my actual laptop to dodgy experiments. I've actually got a Pi Top 3, which turns a Pi 3 into a fully functional laptop, but we'll be connecting to it over SSH for video making purposes. I use the Minicom terminal software to connect, and in a bit you'll see some of the reasons why. If you're doing this for a Windows system, there are lots of terminal applications out there, but I haven't used one for decades. So if you have a recommendation, please leave it in the comments. First, we'll need to go ahead and plug in our serial to TTL adapter. I'll plug that in and we'll make sure that it comes up. And you see we have a FTDI serial device attached at TTY USB 0. Next, we will plug in the camera and we should be able to see it come up as well. All right, and the next step is to plug in the camera itself, which I've done. And you see it here in our kernel log as a USB HID HD web camera. So the next thing we need to do is set up for Minicom. Okay, I've gone ahead and unplugged the camera and we're going to fire up Minicom here. Now I happen to already know that this camera is going to use a baud rate of 115-200, 8N1, and no flow control. This is usually a good place to start when messing with a new device, but it's definitely not universal. You may need to try several baud rates to get a match. Minicom makes this pretty easy to do. You do control A and O and go to serial port setup and you can change the baud rate going through one of several options. I've seen baud rates as low as 1200 baud and as high as 400,000 baud. So don't be afraid to keep changing and trying again. So let's go ahead and plug in the camera. And you see we get a lot of output here. So once it's done scrolling, we're going to go ahead and review all of the data that we got here. So here we are at the top. This device uses the U-Boot bootloader, and it's actually a two-stage loader. It starts with U-Boot SPL, which is secondary program loader. This basically sets up the hardware, puts in all of the specifications for the processor and memory and flash and things like that and gets the hardware ready to boot into the main bootloader, which is here, and this is actual U-Boot. U-Boot is responsible for getting you to the kernel of the operating system that you're actually going to boot, and it has an interactive mode, a lot like an EFI shell on a modern motherboard, or like a boot prom you would find on old Unix equipment. We'll be working with U-Boot more later, but for today, we let it do its thing, which is to load a Linux kernel. Now this part should look pretty familiar to most of you. It's a normal Linux boot log. We do have some fairly old versions of things here. Linux 3.10.14 compiled with a version of GCC 4. Having modern versions of things in this space is actually exceptional. Their device is shipping with 2.x kernels that you can buy on Amazon today. So don't read too much into that. Anyway, the camera starts up and here we have a login prompt. Much of the time you'll get what we have here, which is a root login with no password. So here we are at a shell prompt. Generally in the embedded space, you'll have a user space based on BusyBox and one of the small footprint C libraries. BusyBox is a great project that builds a bunch of tools into a single binary, sharing a ton of code and in many cases providing only basic functions, which saves a crazy amount of space when you don't have a lot to work with. 
Usually the base system will be on a read-only file system, often using a compressed one like we have here. There are some great useful tools, some of which don't make sense considering the hardware we have, but likely is a base image shared by a bunch of different devices that might have more. The software for actually being a webcam is on this read-write partition mounted as slash system and basically boils down to a single application called new camera. Going back to the boot log, you can see that we're using USB gadget mode to provide a USB webcam device. Gadget mode is well supported in the embedded space, but not common on computers as it requires some hardware features to implement. All the common USB types are supported. For example, we could add a USB serial profile and be able to use that rather than the TTL hardware to have a serial console. In addition to the U camera application, they helpfully included LRZ and LSZ, which are tools to transfer files with Z modem directly from your terminal. Many terminal applications, many common included, will recognize that Z modem download automatically. Here's an example of using LSZ to transfer the U camera application back to our Raspberry Pi. This is a serial port connection, so the speed is not going to be super fast. So great, we have a shell, but what can we do with it? As I mentioned before, MIPS has been around for a long time and is well supported by compilers. Just as an example, we're going to build some software of our own to run. Most Linux distros include cross-compilers for various platforms. We're going to use the compilers provided by Ubuntu today, running in a Docker container. Now, this isn't a C programming course, so we're just going to throw together a real quick hello world just to prove that it works. Since this toolchain is based on glibc, we'll have to compile it as a static binary. You'll see this results in a pretty big file. We'll go ahead and use lrz to receive the file on the webcam and do a z modem transfer. So you see, with such a large file, it is going to take a minute to upload. One thing you would want to do if you plan on writing software for this webcam is to build a toolchain based on uclibc. The device itself is using a uclibc, so you'll be able to compile your executables with shared libraries. Transfer is complete. And you see our hello file. And running it, we get our hello world. With a few more bits, you can take this pretty far. The flash ROM on the device is 8 megabytes. If you have a compatible programmer, you can build your own complete image for it with the software and features you want, so long as they'll fit in that space. For more advanced usage, Ingenic publishes an SDK for their extra hardware functions like the video codec and image processing core, and has pretty good documentation on how to use them. So what's my next step with this camera? I'm currently working on a build root setup to put my own custom image on it, but let me tell you about a project very related to this camera. When Hacker Homestead spent a little time with this board, he got the idea of creating a project around the platform that he's named the Teacup. Teacup is a hobbyist board based on the T31 microcontroller that includes a lot more resources and functionality, and I've joined that project as well. The project is still pretty early, but we already have a first revision of a custom development board that is booting and doing basic functions, a community of folks working on an ecosystem. The teacup should fit somewhere between an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi, but with much better image and video capabilities. I'm sure you recognize that this camera comes nowhere near taking advantage of everything the T31 has to offer, but teacup will really bring it to life. Check the description for a link to Hacker Homestead's first video about teacup, and a link to our Discord where we're developing the platform if you'd like to follow along or even join. Well, that's it for today's video. I'll be making more on this camera and on Teacup, and of course, many other topics. Make sure to subscribe to this channel to see those videos, and of course, any comments and questions go below. Have a great day, everybody, and we'll see you in the next video.